Good. Hey, my last question today, and it's a good one, uh, is somebody wrote in and said, God has used me to heal others. Why am I struggling to receive healing? Now, <clears throat> this may press a button in your life. I don't mean to, but it, it may press a button in you. Often, the hardest people to help receive healing are those who God uses in healing themselves. Why? Because... <clears throat> Here's, here's what often happens. Often when people are ministering healing to others, they've learned how to minister in the gifts of the Spirit under the anointing. And the anointing is never for you. God does not anoint you for you. Holy Spirit is in me for me, but he's on me for you. And the anointing is God upon us. So we can move strongly in the anointing of the Lord and see his life and his power flow through us and still not receive from ourselves. And just because God's using you in one area does not mean he'll use you effectively in another. You know, one of my heroes of the faith was a guy called John G. Lake. Amazing man of God, saw incredible healings, planted thousands of churches in South Africa around about 100 years ago. It's an interesting thing. While he was preaching, seeing thousands healed, his wife died of hunger because he didn't have the finances to put food on the table. Now, what conclusion do I draw from that? Here's the main one, that he developed his faith in that area of healing and proclaiming healing. He hadn't developed his faith in the arena of believing God to provide for his needs. And that's a sad reality. What I'm saying is many people can develop a ministry in terms of how to minister healing to others, but haven't developed faith for receiving healing for themselves. You know, in the 19, late 1940s, early 50s, there was a movement here in America <clears throat> called the Voice of Healing Movement. Really great movement. I mean, some people did weird things, as somebody always does somewhere, but it was a real move of God. And there were many prominent evangelists, you know, with massive tents, 50,000 seater tents, traveling in America, preaching the gospel, preaching healing. And you can see, look on YouTube, you'll see it was about the time people began using TV and filming meetings, and you'll see incredible miracles from the lives of people like A.A. Allen, Jack Coe, Aura Roberts, William Brannan, many of these amazing people. It's interesting, two of these, two of these guys being used within that movement who are part of the, heal, the Voice of Healing movement were Kenneth Hagen and T.L. Osborne. And it's interesting, Kenneth Hagen, a young Kenneth Hagen at the time, probably in his 40s, came to T.L. Osborne one day in the early 50s at a conference. And he said, look around this room. He said, you know, most of these people won't be alive in 20, 30, 40 years because they know how to move in the anointing, but they haven't learned how to receive from, by faith from God. And you know what he said, I don't know if it was a prophecy, but it was true. It's interesting, Kenneth Hagen and T.L. Osborne both lived another 50, 60 years in ministry. They both lived into their late 80s or 90s. Both served God, both walked in power. Why? Because they knew the anointing, but they'd learned how to develop their own faith to receive for themselves. So whenever somebody tells me God uses me and they mix that truth with how do I receive from myself, I want to talk to them about where is your faith really at? And so often the not simply come into God's Word, they're looking for a manifestation, an anointing, a gift of the Spirit to flow through somebody else to you. I'll finish with this truth, but it really is a truth you may not like, but it's a Bible truth. God does not guarantee to heal you through the ministry of somebody else. He guarantees that miracles will flow as signs and wonders as we preach the gospel, but He doesn't guarantee to heal you through the anointing. He does guarantee you, to heal you through his covenant, through the promises of his word. And that's the key. That's the place where we should come to. That's the place where we should base our faith.